All right, we're joined now by Jonathan Casillas. He is uh, here on the uh, the pre and the post game show here on WFN, home of the New York Football Giants. Couple things to get into. Jonathan, first time with us on the show. What's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm great, fellas. How's it going, man? All good. You know, listen. Uh, obviously, there's the questions that we would ordinarily ask somebody at this point of the season about the Giants. They almost have to pertain more to next year, based on the circumstances and the record. So. Jonathan, let's start the the future of the quarterback, encompassing everything. Tyrod Taylor's a free agent. Daniel Jones' knee issue. Uh, where the Giants might draft. How do you how do you match all that up in the future? Well, that's the big thing, right? Because it's like the Giants they started the season struggling, you know, getting out, getting embarrassed at home against the Cowboys, and then you know the expectations were you know lower, just like the Jets. The Jets losing Aaron Rodgers in the fourth, you know, but they actually won that game against the Bills that first week. Expectations being lowered, and it's like, okay, cool. The defense started taking shape, and then all of a sudden, this last game against the Raiders where they lose Daniel Jones, defense doesn't show up, and then the questions become exponential. And you had so many questions going into the game, and now it's like, all right, add an injury to insult. It's like, all right, where do the Giants go from here? And that's the question. Bro, I play ball. You know, I, I've been a part of the Giants. I've been a part of struggling teams with the Giants, with other franchises, two Super Bowl teams. And you just, you just looking like, all right, how do we get out of this mess? Because I think the Jets game was when you realized that the Giants were a bad team. And then after this Raiders game, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, we're definitely a bad team. How do we figure out how to at least survive this season without our coaches being fired, because if it keeps going this way, guys, if they don't win no more games, Dayball had a year of, of a buffer because they went to the playoffs and won a game. But if, if they don't figure out how to turn this ship around and they don't win another game, th- this is very bad for everyone involved. Uh, uh, Players, listen. GM, head coaches, you know, so they have to be able to figure out how to win a game because it's not looking good, guys. That's a very honest and blunt, I think, accurate assessment. That's a heck of an answer right there. But I guess my question is this, and they are a bad team. The record says they're a bad team, Jonathan, by the way. We know that. But, like, why are they bad when they were good last year? What the hell happened? You know what? That's the question that I was trying to figure out from, I guess, the first three weeks before they played the Seahawks. It's like, all right. You, we we kind of knew they were going to lose to the Cowboys and the Niners, but you wanted to see something competitive. And it just haven't really happened against any quality team besides the Bills. And that's even questionable, too, what the Bills have been doing uh, recently. And then it's like, all right, how what's ha- what happened from last year? Because we thought there was an upgrade. And then the inconsistency al- among the offensive line with not only just the play, but with the carousel being the bodies that are available – and it's just one of those seasons, and I think it, it happens in New York more than other places, where, where you don't start off to a good start and it kind of kind of gets out of control. And by the time you figure out the identity, they already got five losses. And then the defense starts playing well. Guys, we're already one and five. You know, it's like they start playing well when they're one and five. And, guys, you know this happens. Even on great teams with good offenses, good offense, good defenses, special teams, whatever the case is, they're due for a bad game on one side of the ball. And that happened last week against the Raiders. But it's like they can't afford to do that, just like the Jets. The Jets cannot afford to have one bad game on defense, or you're going to see a blowout, just what just happened, right? It's the same type of situation. They got the same situation, the Jets and the Giants. They just arrived there in different ways. The quarterback play, whether it's due to injury, whether it's due to whoever's in there, and then the inconsistency among the offensive line, and then people really not doing what they're supposed to be doing, mostly on the offense. So you got the defense has to carry the team, and the defense really didn't get come to to about three or four weeks ago. Because Miami game, they had three turnovers, but they gave up a 1,000 freaking yards, guys. You know, guys running all over the place. So my thing is, is, what, who, what was it? Was they reading too much into what was written about them in New York? And was it too much? Because I'm trying to figure it out too, guys. Mm. I spend a lot of time in that building. I spend a lot of time covering those guys. And, and uh, you know, I got they have high-character guys. You know, high-character guys, leaders in that locker room. But the whole thing was how good was the quarterback play this year compared to last year? Daniel Jones, make no mistake, 
He was a pretty good quarterback last year. That's why he got that deal. This year, he really hasn't played, bro, four four quarters this year of good football. That's it from any quarterback that's played for the New York Giants. The second half of the Cardinals game and the first half of the Commanders game, guys, that's it. That's all offensively that they've done that was actually good football this year. And I'm sorry, I'm so animated, but I, I feel for these I guys. love it. Because I'm trying to figure this out, too. Yeah. I want to know because i got to go talk to BBKL, to Giants, tomorrow or Thursday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brandon yeah, Tierney, yeah. Sal Lacan on the fan. We're talking with Jonathan awesome. Casillas. You can catch him on the Giants pre- and post-game show. So, Jonathan, with that, definitively, if you made up your mind, we talked about this earlier in the week on Monday, as a matter of fact, it's sad to see what has happened to Daniel Jones here in year five. I wanted to evaluate him, hope he could throw the football down the field. Do you believe the Giants need to go in a different direction? I think they have to prepare for the future. And I don't know if that means a different direction because we all understand this. And whatever people can, may say about Daniel Jones, he sold me last year. He's a tough guy. I think that's the reason why he went back in the game when he went down uh, uh, on Sunday, he went back in the game because he's a tough dude. Yeah. He's a tough guy that that's taken a lot of hits in his career. This year being maybe the top, you know, with him getting sacked as many times. And then, guys, they don't even accumulate the number of times that he gets hit when he runs past the line of scrimmage. And we all know he can't slide. So the amount of, the amount of hits he's taken since he's played football for the New York Giants – It has to be like double the next quarterback because the way he runs and the way he really doesn't really protect himself. So I feel some type of way because the guy just, he just gets up and plays. He he doesn't know any better. So I think he's going to come back. How good will he be when he comes back? Because he's not a pocket quarterback, guys. He's a mobile quarterback. And when he's rolling, he is running the football. He has a good run game in Saquon or whoever's playing running back for him. And he's also you know, bringing the ball down when he, when he has pass plays on very opportune times in games, getting those first downs, and then also design run plays like we saw that happen last year that came in great situational football, which hasn't translated this year, and that's not just Daniel Jones' fault. That has a lot to do with the play calling. That has a lot to do with other guys. You know, like last week, Tommy DeVito, he threw two interceptions. I give one to him. One is on Darius Slayton. Like, Slayton, that was him. It was a great ball. He threw it hard. He threw it accurately. That's how you're supposed to throw those passes right there. It went right through his hands. It's not always about the quarterback play. It's about the people around them and the calls that they're getting. And I feel like situationally, the Giants, they haven't done a good job in calling calls and, most importantly, guys, executing. They haven't executed at all on offense besides the four quarters that I spoke about earlier. This was awesome. Uh, really, listen, we got to bounce. But as John think see us. Of course, you hear him pre and post game, and, and I've been a fan of the way you deliver. You know your opinions. You're, you're honest. You're, you, I think you have great objectivity. I think you deliver it in a way that fans feel it. Like it's just giant fans are pissed, and you come across a little pissed, but 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 fair. Uh, great spot, man. Great having you on the show, and hopefully hey, we'll link up guys. next week, fellas. Listen. I was ready to come to the studio with Carl when I saw him. I'm telling you, I was like, yo, you want to go up there? Me and you two on two versus Sal and Brandon. What's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, we're no, ready. Right. Yeah, we yeah. welcome you guys both, as a matter of fact. Yeah, we, we would have been ready, too. We would have had weapons, though. That's the only chance. To, we we would have needed baseball bats. Uh, we would have beat the crap out of us, man. Hey, listen, it's all good with Thank Carl. Thank you for having me, but, Yeah, no, nah, this, this was a great chat, dude. We'll get you back up next week, Jonathan, okay? All right, fellas, take it easy. Thank Good. You, Look, there you go. Look at him even get into the bank stuff. This guy's awesome. <laughs> Jonathan Casillas, great spot. There you go. Yeah, it's just unfortunate where the Giants are at. It's- 